Okay, geometry, chapter 8, section 1, geometric mean. Okay, we're going to be talking about uh, the means and extremes um, when we find this. And following along on page 531, if you're doing that, you will find that the geometric mean between two numbers is their positive square root of their product. So if I'm going to find geometric mean, that's an unknown, um, of let's say the numbers, um, oh, let's say 10 and 4. So I've got 4 and 10, and I want to find their geometric mean. Their geometric mean, which is going to be represented by x, is equal to the square root of their product. So the square root of 4 times 10, which is going to be the square root of 40. Okay. Now, we can look at that square root of 40 and simplify that. Okay, just had a knock at the door, so sorry, I'm not exactly sure where I was. Let's go ahead and simplify this this radical 40. So we're going to pull out, obviously when you look up above, we could have simplified it there. If it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, then that's going to be, uh, the geometric mean is going to be 2 square roots of 10. Okay, so that's how we find a geometric mean. Let's do another one real quick, and then I'll show you how to actually apply it into a triangle problem. Um, so let's go maybe 5 and um, let's go 5 and 20. This one's going to be tough. Okay, setting you up for success on this one. So we're going to go geometric mean is the square root of their product, which is going to be the square root of 100, giving you a geometric mean of 10. Okay, so now we're going to uh, look at some examples where we can use this to solve some triangles. Okay, so let's look at theorem 8-1. Going to be a few theorems we're going to discuss in the next few minutes. This is the first one. Uh, what I've drawn is I've drawn an altitude BD. Um, and in this case, the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of the larger triangle, and I should have um, I should have had a 90 degree angle here. Sorry. So that way I know that AC is the hypotenuse. Um, if BD is drawn to the hypotenuse, we created some similar triangles. Okay. By using geometric mean here in just a second, uh, we're going to show that triangle ABD, which is the larger of the two we just created is similar to triangle BCD, which is the smaller of the ones we just created. Okay, And those are also similar to the large original triangle. So the large original triangle would be ABC. And so that's going to be similar to ABD. And triangle ABC will also be similar to triangle BCD. Again, that is if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of the larger triangle. Again, we'll use that in just a second. So let's go to our next theorem. Our next theorem is going to be 8-2. All right, let's take, it some more, take a look at some more information with that altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. You'll see I've labeled the altitude h, and I've labeled the two sections, x and y. The reason I want to do that is the altitude is going to be the geometric mean of the two sections that are created. Okay, So remember just a minute ago, um, we had x equals the square root of that 5 times 10. Well, since we don't know what these are right now, this is going to be h equals the square root of the product of the two sides that we just formed. The reason I didn't label those cd and da is because that would get a little bit confusing underneath that square root bracket. And this is also how the book does it as well. So h, which is the altitude, is the geometric mean of x and y. And so you know, just using the example we did before, um, 
actually we did 5 times 20, but I'm going to do 5 times 10. If that was 5 and that was 10 and they wanted you to find the altitude, then that would simply be the altitude is equal to the square root of 50. We know that that's going to break down into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. So that altitude we can find is 5 square roots of 2. And that's using the side lengths of 5 and 10. Okay, so let's step on to theorem 8-3. Okay, theorem 8-3. And then um, I believe we're going to wrap it up and see a good example of that. All right, this is a crazy little creation. Notice that um, the angles are in capital letters and the sides are in lowercase letters. Um, and they correspond to the opposite. Oh, I want to do a, okay, B. The opposite side is B. C. The opposite angle is C. Come on, make me a little circle. There we go. And then um, angle A is opposite side A. Okay. Still have the little pieces X and Y. So now we're going to be finding um, now we're going to be finding A and C. Okay. We're going to be finding A and C. Okay. So A is going to be our geometric mean. Let's make sure I'm on. A black pin here. A is going to be the geometric mean of the segment that it is adjacent to, which is x, times the entire segment that's opposite, which is b. And that means c will be the geometric mean of the segment it is adjacent to, which is y times the entire segment, which is B. Again, when I'm looking at side A, the adjacent side is, oh, I don't like that. I want that to be bigger. The adjacent side to A is side X, and the adjacent side to C is side Y. Just a quick reminder, adjacent stands for next to, okay? And so in the, next, uh, in the next example, I'm going to attach some numbers to that. So let's go ahead and look at the final example. We're going to wrap it all up, put it all together. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to combine all of those theorems, and we are going to solve for x, we're going to solve for y, and we're going to solve for z. So using those theorems and the examples before, if you think you can find x, y, and z, go ahead and hit pause and work through it, and then we'll see if we are correct at the end. Okay, so what I'm going to look at first is I'm going to look at x. I notice that it's an altitude, and it is drawn to that opposite hypotenuse. So the theorem that I'm going to use oh, is not the keyboard theorem. The theorem that I'm going to use is this one, theorem 8-2. Remember that the altitude is the geometric mean between the two pieces that have been created. So in this case, the two pieces that have been created are the 5 and the 20. So x is congruent to the square root of 5 times 20. This kind of looks familiar. I believe this was the example that I did. Obviously, the square root of 5 times the square root of 20 is the square root of 100. So x equals 10. I'm going to clean it up and put it over here. Okay, x equals 10. Okay, because y is a leg, then we're going to use theorem 8-3. Notice how I would compare y to side a in this case. And a was the geometric mean between the adjacent side and the entire side. So let's go back and look what we have. So y is going to be the geometric mean of the adjacent side, okay, which is 5, times the entire side, which is going to be 25. 
Okay, so the adjacent side of 5 and the entire side, which is 25. So that's going to equal the square root of 125. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and find out what the square root of 125 is. We're going to round that to the nearest tenth. And I will fast forward here. And that's going to be approximately 11.2. Okay, so now we have found x, y. Um, now, excuse me, we have found x and y. Now, a couple of things you could do here. I mean, you've got a big triangle. Um, you know the hypotenuse is 25. You know one leg is 11.2. You could do the Pythagorean theorem to find side z. Um, but I think using the geometric mean is just a little bit easier. And so to find z, we're going to find its adjacent side, which was 20. And we're going to multiply that by the entire side, which was 25. Okay, so 25 times 20, that's going to give me the square root of 500. And so skipping ahead and um, go ahead and doing that computation um, for you, that's going to come up to be about 22.4. Now, very important to look at this right triangle and make sure that those values make sense. Obviously, z could not be greater than 25 because 25 is the hypotenuse. So 22.4, that makes pretty good sense, and that sounds about correct. Okay, so x equals 10, y equals 11.2, and z equals 22.4. That is example number three on page 533, if you want to take a look at that in the book. So pretty extensive today. Got about 12 minutes, but that's 8-1 geometric mean.